Hi there. I'd like to take you through a few enhancements that we've been making around ITSI to improve some of the machine learning capabilities that we've got in and around the product. Many of these capabilities will uplift parts of ITSI that you're probably quite familiar with around running predictive analytics, around your service trees, and around the episodes as well in ITSI. And essentially what we're going to do is take you through a couple of those enhancements. We're going to talk through what we've been doing around the predictive analytics workflow. We're going to talk through some of the graph analytics that we've been using to help with notable event aggregation policies and also talk through some of the analysis we've been doing to support root cause analysis once you've actually generated an episode uh, and you're trying to figure out what is what has made that instant occur okay and everything that you see here is included in the smart ITSI insights app for Splunk this is another one of the MLTK smart workflow apps and we're going to go through it bit by bit. Working, what you can see up on the screen here at the moment is the four main sections of the app. So the first one, looking at the predictive analytics and the workflow that we've introduced to help generate those predictive health scores. The second piece is looking at service tree analysis, so trying to apply some graph analytics to identify similar types of services across your service tree so that you can then generate event aggregation policies around those groups of services rather than individual entities. The third section of the app is all about episode analysis, so that root cause analysis piece. I'll talk through that in more detail. And then finally, for the ongoing tuning and maintenance of your services in ITSI, we have a dashboard that you can use to help tune your KPI importance weightings. Okay. So we're going to start off with the predictive analytics workflow. And I'm sure many of you will be familiar with predictive analytics in ITSI. This isn't a major overhaul. Essentially what we're trying to do is add some intelligence around how you select the right KPIs to make that prediction and then make some recommendations about the right algorithm to use for that prediction. So starting off in a similar fashion to what you have in ITSI today, select a service. So in this case, we're going to have a look at the on-prem database. On selecting a service, you can then drill down into it to see some high level metrics about how that service is performing. So you can pick the time range you're interested in, and then there's a few summary bits of information. So if we have a look at the high-level summary, we can see that for the on-prem database, over the past 24 hours that we've selected up here, the majority of the time our service was operating at a normal level, so pretty healthy. However, there was some time where it was operating below the expected level that we would expect for this service. And you can see that that's roughly 6% of the time. So that, that could be indicative of a problem with this service. The other two charts we have in this section here is something that tells us how many times there's been a big drop in that health score. And in this case, a big drop is you know, 10 percentage points or more. So this could tell you if you've got an unpredictable health score. If you see lots of very rapid drops, that could be indicative of some kind of underlying issue or perhaps a misconfiguration of some of your KPIs. The chart we have below kind of talks to that same scenario. So it's looking to find outliers in the range that we've selected. Again, if you see lots of outliers, in this case we have none, suggesting that the service health score is fairly predictable or at least fairly stable. Um, Whereas if you were to have lots of outliers, that suggests that it could be quite erratic and that there might be some kind of issue with your service. 
Beneath that, we've got something that allows you to compare the service health score, this orange line up here, with all of the KPIs and all of the service health scores that underpin this particular service. So here we're looking for bits of correlation. You can see with the response time, when that appears to spike, we do, it does look like there's a drop in the service health score. So eyeballing those metrics to see if there's any obvious relationships in the data. So this is step one in the process of that predictive workflow. It's just trying to get a feel for how static, how stable, how reliable the service is, as well as trying to give you a feel for whether there's any correlation between the KPIs and the service health score, any obvious visual correlations in the data. So if we move on to the next step of the workflow and look at that correlation in a bit more detail, you'll see some reports that tell you using some statistics, and it's fairly simple statistics, we're just running some correlation analysis, that compare the future health score, so the health score in 30 minutes time, with the current set of metrics that we've got in the system. Here you can see for the on-prem database, over seven days, there are four KPIs that appear to have a strong correlation with the future health score two that appear to have a decent correlation, and four that appear to have very little correlation with that future health score. Now this is at the point where if all of your KPIs landed in this poorly correlated bucket, that would be a good flag to say, we're not gonna be able to use predictive for this service. And there's a dashboard that allows you to view the KPI relationships in a bit more detail. And we'll make some recommendations about how you could tune those to perhaps get a greater level of predictability. But provided you have some decent relationships in the data, you'll be able to move on to training those predictive models. So moving on to that next step, this is where it again diverges from what we have in ITSI at the moment. So right now in ITSI, all of the KPIs for a given service will be used to train a model to make a prediction. Whereas here, we've got the option to either use all, as we do in ITSI today, or just to use those recommended KPIs. And when we talk about the recommended ones, really they're those KPIs that have a medium strength or high strength correlation with the future health score. So a subset of the KPIs under a service potentially. Clicking on the train models button will run a set of algorithms against your data across the time period you select with the KPIs that you want to include. And it will then recommend which algorithm it thinks is the best fit for getting the most accurate predictions for this particular service, for this particular data. I'll give you a bit more detail here. So even if it recommends something, but it only has an acceptable level of performance, you may not choose to deploy it into production. Whereas here, we've got one that's been recommended as good. That would be something that I would consider putting into production because it's getting the service health score right around 80% of the time. So, so a pretty good model. So that's the predictive workflow. The other piece we've worked on is looking at how we generate episodes. And at the moment in ITSI, there's a few different ways of doing it. So you can define manual event aggregation policies using known quantities in the data, or you could use smart mode that kind of goes away, works out the best way of grouping the data, and then generates the aggregation policies for you. What we've tried to do here is form a bit of a halfway house. So try and apply some machine learning to enrich our correlation searches, and then use the enrichments to create notable event aggregation policies around. So to go over that in a bit more detail, um, if we take the service structure itself, we can infer useful labels from that structure 
by running graph analytics against it and a particular type of graph analytics called label propagation which essentially looks for similar types of components on a connected system by looking at the overall connections across the entire system and you may be familiar with this type of analytic even without being aware of it as it's the type of thing that Amazon use that Google use to group you into segments so that they can market the most appropriate either adverts or products to you. So as you're browsing through Amazon, you may see customers who looked at this item were also interested in. Often that type of recommendation is driven by a label propagation algorithm. So if we apply that to our service tree, which is what's happened on this dashboard, it will then start to group all of our services into different clusters depending on the connections. So here we can see a group of services that have been lumped into the same category. There's a subgroup here. And similarly for a separate service tree structure, we've got some more subcomponents that it's found. And using the labels that this algorithm has found, so these different communities in our service tree, we can create episode aggregation policies that alert against a community rather than an individual service. And you might need to go through and add on the enrichments to your correlation searches, either by using a lookup, which the service tree dashboard will help you build, or by using the content pack for monitoring and alerting. And again, there's an automated way of doing that in the dashboard that I just showed you. But once you've got the data in there, it's a case of using the community label that it's found as long as it's present, and then splitting into episodes using that community. And you may choose to add in some additional um, rules into that event aggregation policy, just to make sure that you're splitting it and sorting it in the right way. The other thing we've done here is we've made sure that the name of the episode includes that community label. So that when it comes to looking at your episodes, you can see directly where it's come from. In this case, we're just looking at numeric labels. You could quite easily go back and give those communities a more meaningful name than just a, a number as we have here. So it could be the thing at the top of the service tree within that subcluster. Okay. Now once you're in your episodes, there are a few things that can be quite difficult to do. So the first one is triaging root cause. So you've got a list of episodes and you want to find out what's the likely source of this issue. What's the thing that may have been causing it? So we've got another dashboard in the app that allows you to look at your episodes, that allows you to interact with them. So clicking on an episode will generate some analytics in the panels below that tell you a bit about what is causing what. And we've done this using a technique called causal inference, which looks for causal relationships in the data, not quite the correlation that we were looking at previously. But essentially this is saying for the on-prem database health score, there are a number of KPIs that around the time of the episode had a direct impact on the service health score. And we can see that in the chart here. It can be a bit messy, so you can drag it around a bit um, to see the nodes a bit more clearly, to see the relationships a bit more clearly. And also within the table, if we were to click on this, it would open up in the deep dive review all of these KPIs that are having a direct impact on the service health score so that we can start to triage the potential reason behind that episode being generated. So here we can see that list of KPIs, we can see the service health score, and we can see the alerts that were generated around this episode as well. Now in this case, just purely looking at the color coding, it looks like it could have been disk space or memory utilization 
that have caused this episode to be generated. So instead of having to manually pick through the KPIs, instead of having to do that triage yourself, we're trying to make that recommendation using machine learning and using causal inference to pick out the relevant KPIs for your episode. Now the final piece we've introduced in this app is broadly similar to what we've seen already. So looking at correlation and causal relationships. And this dashboard was designed to help you tune your KPI importance. So essentially by looking at the correlation between the service health score and the KPIs that sit underneath it, and looking at the causal relationships, it'll make some recommendations based on your current KPI importance to say, well, maybe you could tune them up or tune them down, or this one looks okay, that type of thing, as well as giving you a similar chart that shows you some of those causal relationships in the data. So hopefully that all made sense. Um, if you're interested in the app, feel free to go and download it. It's on Splunk Base now. And thanks for your time.